Hi. In this video, I want to see what we can learn about the force that holds us to the Earth's surface using some things that you may have around your house. So I'm going to start with the swing of a pendulum in a couple of wall clocks and in a long case clock. I'm going to use my record turntable and a specially built pendulum that's going to go with it and through those devices I hope that what we're going to learn is how people measured this gravitational attraction uh, in the first place and we'll have a look at how it varies across the Earth's surface. So believe it or not you don't weigh the same uh, here on the ground wherever you live as you would if you travel to the equator or to the North Pole or indeed uh, up to the top of a high mountain. But let's see where this leads us. This wall clock has the um, shortest length pendulum of all three of the clocks that I'm filming this morning. Uh, its pendulum length is actually less than 20 centimetres. And you'll notice that it's um, got a swing cycle that's actually very short. And in fact, if you time this by listening to the noise of the escapement movement, uh, you should get a reasonable estimate uh, of, its, um, of its characteristic time, the time between uh, one tick and going back through a complete cycle um, to the starting position again. The length of the pendulum in this American made uh, wall clock is about 35 centimetres. You can time it as with all clocks just by listening to the tick. Well here we have the longest pendulum of the clocks that we've looked at. Uh, this um, long case clock has a pendulum length of about 90 centimetres and again you can time it using the, um, the tick-tock sound of the escapement mechanism just remembering that you only count every tick or every tock whichever you choose because it needs to complete a whole cycle for us to give it uh, give us its um, characteristic time. Well, if we're going to talk about the swing of a pendulum, um, then we need to start thinking about how we explain that. Um, so the system that I want to look at is a fairly straightforward thing. So we have a, um, a string, a wire, a piece of wood, whatever it is, fixed at the top. Uh, with a um, with a mass swinging freely at the bottom, and what happens, of course, you'll have seen this in uh, clocks regu regulated by um, a pendulum, is that if we set it going, it simply swings from one side to the other through uh, the upright position here. So a complete swing of a pendulum, one cycle, one periodic time is from one extreme of the swing all the way through to the other extreme and back to its starting position. Uh, and that gives us a characteristic time of swing which um, in all the things I'm going to show you this morning I'll just label as capital T. Okay, And this we will uh, measure always in seconds. And the other really important quantity you're going to need to know in order to work all this stuff out is the length of that pendulum and I'm just going to call that L. Okay. Now it turns out, and I'm not going to go into the whys and wherefores of this, but it turns out that uh, we can describe this swing of a pendulum using rotation in a circle. So we're going to 
basically pinch the mathematics associated with something moving at uniform speed in a circle and use that in order to explain this swinging to and fro. And you'll appreciate that moving in a circle is in many ways a lot easier to um, to understand. Uh, it's, I mean, if we take an object anywhere on that circle and we have it swing, rotate rather, all the way around back to its starting position, that we can say is one cycle in our circle. And actually we're going to label that with exactly the same um, symbol as we use for our pendulum. So what we're going to find is that we can uh, take the very simple equations associated with something moving around in a circle and apply uh, with a few nips and tucks uh, that equation to this swing from side to side of the pendulum, which is a lot more complex. All right, so just imagine where it is now um, at its furthest extreme on one side, its acceleration is back down that way. But of course when it's over here at this extreme uh, then suddenly its acceleration has reversed. It's going back the other way again. Uh, and likewise of course its speed. Its speed actually comes to zero when it's at rest at the extreme here. It speeds up all the way down to the bottom and then slows down again until it gets to this extreme over here. So this is actually quite a complex motion that's going on in our pendulum. Whereas in this uniform motion in a circle, uh, we only have to worry about uh, whatever our speed of rotation is. Otherwise, everything is, is relatively straightforward. Um, and what we get out of this is a really amazing uh, equation. It's amazing because it ex explains so much and I'll show you later on where we can where we can use this. But it turns out that the time of one period, so either a rotation here or a backwards and forwards swing of our pendulum, uh, is given by this equation uh, 2 times pi, and pi you'll remember is about 3.14 or 22 over 7 if you want it in fractions. Uh, multiplied by the square root of the length of our pendulum divided by g, which is the um, gravitational acceleration. Okay, so it's actually a relatively simple equation. But from this, we can get all sorts of amazing stuff, which I'll try and show you now. So what we need, of course, is something that's going to rotate uniformly and we're going to need an appropriate length uh, of pendulum. Now, if I take this equation at face value, then I can calculate what I might need. And the two objects I'm going to use are um, for my, uh, for my um, turntable that's going round at uniform speed. I'm actually just going to use my record deck. I can be fairly sure that this will go round um, at 32 revolutions, sorry, 33 revolutions per minute. Uh, and if you do the maths, you'll find that that corresponds to um, one period, one cycle um, being just under two seconds, 1.85 seconds. OK, so we should be able to test this out now. If I get the length of my pendulum swing right, I should observe that uh, an object placed on this rotating turntable will go all the way around once back to its starting position in the same time as um, our appropriate pendulum. So I'm going to draw that in a different colour now. Um, swinging all the way from over here to over here and back again. Okay, so we can actually test 
to see whether this equation uh, is accurate or not. So here we go. A great reveal. Something that goes around uniformly in a circle is my um, record turntable. So I've set it to go around that 33 revolutions per minute and those of you who are exceptionally good at mental arithmetic will work out that that means it goes all the way around once or rather this um, stormtrooper goes around once in 1.85 seconds. Um, so we get a complete cycle of course every time we see this face front on. Now I've set up a pendulum according to the um, theory that I told you about earlier. So I'm just going to see if we can get this now swinging uh, in sync. Okay, so hopefully you believe me that our equation then could do uh, what we said it could do. So here it is again t is 2 pi root of l over g and we're measuring that in seconds okay so if that equation is true then you know we've done a we've done an interesting experiment this morning and we've proven that an equation is is okay but actually it doesn't get us very far in terms of the physics of the world around us but actually we can rewrite this equation and that's what I want to do now just to show you uh, how this might actually turn into something much more uh, widely applicable. Not that you're going to be able to test it out until we finish this wretched lockdown, got a vaccine and can wander off and do our own thing again. So I need to rearrange this particular equation and I want to rearrange it so that I've got gravitational acceleration over here uh, on the left hand side. So if I rearrange this equation I actually end up with this. So now look I've actually got a way of measuring what the acceleration due to gravity is all right, uh, and therefore the force of gravity on any, um, uh, any object um, anywhere in fact on the Earth's surface. All I need to do um, is carefully measure the length of my pendulum, carefully measure the time of each period uh, of oscillation of our pendulum, and I can put those numbers in to this equation and work out a number for g. And in fact this is exactly what uh, has happened in the past. People have used very sensitive measurements of the swing of a pendulum in order to measure the gravitational attraction uh, across the Earth's surface. Now whether you remember this or not I don't know it doesn't really matter but in most of our school textbooks I suspect you would have seen a value of g quoted as 9.81 uh, meters per second squared. Okay, and that's a fairly universally quoted value, but it is not the value you would measure uh, at any point on the Earth's surface, or rather at every point on the Earth's surface. It varies. So, for instance, this number is actually reasonably accurate um, for Canterbury, uh, and in fact for London, which is the nearest published one I could find. Um, but if we go further north, so for instance we go to Edinburgh, uh, this number becomes much more closely approximated by 9.82 metres per second squared. Uh, and if we then go, um, let me see, let's go over to Paris for instance, no New York, let's try New York. In New York the value drops to 9.80. If we go up to the North Pole, it's 9.83, uh, and on the equator, um, it's actually 9.78.
Now, why is that? But actually, a lot of it is just due to the fact that the Earth is not a perfect sphere. It's flattened north to south and it bulges out at the equator simply because it's a spinning object. So go to the North Pole, for instance, and you're actually closer to the centre of the Earth. And we get a somewhat higher figure like that. Go to the equator and you're further away. So the figure goes down again. Uh, and uh, those of us up at 50-ish degrees uh, latitude, somewhere in between, we have this textbook value here of 9.81. But it varies over the Earth. It varies actually depending on whether you measure uh, at sea level or up on the top of a mountain. You can even measure those differences. So our simple pendulum um, uh, has its mathematical explanation taken from uh, something moving around in a circle. But with it, we can actually do some very interesting measurements of the variation of Earth's gravitational attraction um, at different points across its surface. So there we are, from a simple wall clock through a record turntable to measuring something really very fundamental um, for our existence on this planet.